Hola, reyes y reinas, high kings and queens. I pray that I find you excited today. I pray that you're resting, and recovering on today. So happy 4th of July, all kings and queens. For those who uh, played a great part in our freedom, thank you for your services in the past, today, and even in the future. God bless y'all. Um, I have a true heart of thankfulness and gratitude for all the people that fight for our freedom and for our country. So thank you today for your time invested. Um, we are reading today from Romans 12, six through eight. Uh, let me open in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we honor you. We thank you for air in our lungs. We thank you for life. We thank you for the bold, courageous people that fight for our freedom in the past and today and in the future. We thank you, Father, for them being obedient to the calling, to the chosenness that they are called to fight for our country, for our freedom, that they lay their lives down every day for each and every one of us. In Jesus name, Father, I thank you for them. Bless them, Father. In the miraculous way that you do, Father, we thank you for your unearned, unexplainable, uncommon, preferential treatment of the fruits of the Holy Spirit, which are self-control, um, forgiveness, grace, love, kindness, gentleness, um, his peace in Jesus' name. We thank you, Father, that your word is going to accomplish what you send it to accomplish today. In Jesus' mighty name, have your, have your way, Lord. We are exceptional. We are able, we are pre-qualified, favored, protected, pre-approved, equipped, and will be all God created us to be in Jesus' name. Have your way, great God, that you are today. May this word activate in us and deactivate what it needs to be deactivated. May it give us life. May it give us grace, mercy, kindness, all of your fruits, Father, so we can be those fruits in this life and in this world in Jesus' name that you have blessed us for. Bless us too. Thank you for your presence and your peace, Father, your prosperity and your partnerships. We want to be one with you every day and any day, Father. We thank you for your grace and your mercy, how you've come to save us, to help get others saved for the glory of your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have your way, great God that you are. You are an admiral, God, an honoring God. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm telling you, I am learning now that I want to every day come up with a different word, a letter of the alphabet, and put a word that God is. Because I don't want to repeat the same prayers that he is a great God. He is an anointed God. He is a favorable God. He, every day, I'm giving myself a new letter to say what he is. If it's A, it's admirable. If it's H, honest. Um, I just want to put my admiration and my thankfulness into that. So I have my grandchild today. I'm on grandma duties. So um, today we have a great word. Let's begin. Father, in the name of Jesus, have your way. Romans 12, 6 through 8 says, If your gifts, if your gift is prophesying, then prophesy. In accordance with your faith, if it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is then if it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. Mm, have your way, great God. So if your gift is, that is gifts. It could be his presence is a present. Bring your Holy Spirit. A gift can be a skill or a trade. Prophesying is professing. Prophesying is witnessing. Whatever it is that you have witnessed, his glorious, miraculous acts in your life or others' life, he's telling us to profess and to prophesy. Speak on it in accordance. If you have gifts of seeing things before they happen, warn people. You're having dreams. Whatever it is that the Holy Spirit has blessed you with, it's important that you don't hoarder those things. There's a time in a season where God will give you a word and it's just for you. However, when he gives you prophecy to speak prophecy in accordance with your faith, what is faith? Faith is trusting, seeing without believing. It's a confidence. It's your belief in God. Do it with your faith. So do it in trusting him, not trusting in your own understanding. If it is serving, whatever, then serve. Whatever business. I've mentioned that we are businesses. We are corporations. We are industries. Whatever you feel that you are, you are. You Whatever it is that God has created you to serve in, you can create a business in it. You can go and help someone else serve in their business. So when you know that you are a business, it knows that wherever, whoever you go work for, whatever family you're blessing, your business should be profitable to them. Your business should advance them. Your business should bless them. If it is teaching, then teach. If you have education, skills knowledge revelation like clarity then teach those things to others hold on my grandchild is getting fussy <laughs> come on, come on, come on. excuse me sorry excuse me let me carry on and if it is being a grandmother and blessing your grandchildren with your time sacrifice that <laughs> it says if it is to encourage then give encouragement 
What does that mean? It means to encourage others where you see that they are failing or falling or where they need some support or they just need a simple smile or a love or some type of encouragement that you see that they could fall. Lift them up spiritually, lift them up emotionally, lift them up physically, help someone up. Someone needs a door held. You see somebody that's handicapped, their legs don't work, but yours do. Use your legs to help them. That's what it's talking about. Serve, giving. Uh, if it is giving, then give generously. Your time, your love, your peace. I'm not saying to bring people in your life that continues taking your peace. What I'm, that's a whole nother video. What I am saying is that if you've got peace, you've got love, you've got wisdom, it's saying to give generously because these are the things that God has called us to come be in this earth. How do we bring heaven down to earth? Being heaven-like, being Christ-like, bring it Holy Spirit. If it is to lead, do it diligently. And what does diligently mean? I have an idea of what it means, but let's, let's look it up to make sure that I do not get it misconstrued. Diligently. Diligently means in a way that shows care and cautiousness in one's work or duties. Meaning that you're putting great care and compassion in what it is that you are doing. So it's saying to lead, do it cautiously. Do it diligently. Do it with great care. Don't just lead people. If you're going, The blind cannot lead someone to see. The blind leading the blind is a mess. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. What does mercy mean? Let's look it up because to me, I was thinking that it meant showing compassion when it is undeserving. Mercy means compassion or forgiveness shown towards someone who is within one's power to put it. So if someone has do, done you dirty, it's not saying go do them dirty. It's saying show mercy and do it with joy. If someone has betrayed you or someone has done something to you that you feel like, no, they're not deserving of my time, my love, my finances. And God is calling you to bless them financially or with your time. And you feel that they've done you dirty. So therefore you want to repay evil for evil. He's telling us to show mercy. If you have the softened heart that he's giving you. And how do we get these things from the Holy Spirit? And how do we be these things? How do we create these environments? Is that when we get the Holy Spirit, one with us in partnership, as we surrender, when I open in prayer, we're, we're becoming one with God. When we become with one, there's activation in our heart that overrides any evil bitterness or anything that's in there. Love is a choice. It's important for you to recognize that it is a decision that you make to be these things for the will of God. Bring it, Holy Spirit. Mercy, forgiveness, and compassion. Do it cheerfully. Do it with joy. Do it with happiness. Don't give with a sad face. Don't give where they're like, they know that you thought really hard on giving it to them. So they're like, they don't feel that you're giving it to them with the willingness. They feel that you're doing it because you have to. This is saying to do it cheerfully. Whew. Let me get into the word. So today is the gift of freedom. It's gift will, gifts will use, but with my remix, we're going to make it the gift of freedom in Jesus' name. Um, I also looked up what is biblical gift. Gifts men give to men, sacrificial offerings presented to God, gifts to men, especially in connection with salvation, righteousness, his grace. Mm. That is Lewis Goldberg. That was a quote. It's telling us, and, and you won't recognize that when you give gifts, even to the most greediest person, when you gift a gift, give a gift, that thoughtness, love, and affection makes us feel good. So, and today my word is, so I was learning, the Lord told me to research and study the Declaration of Independence today to give myself a little one-on-one. -on -one. And um, I will tell you that I'm learning that when God tells you to do something, it might be something so small, but it's significant. So I'm going to share with you, um, let me, I'm going to go read today's devotion and then I'm going to carry on with what the Lord revealed for me to share with you. So the author writes, what is your spiritual gift? Spiritual gifts are an extraordinary power given by the Holy Spirit. So to get the power of his Holy Spirit and the fruits of his Holy Spirit, patience, gentleness, self-control, to get all those wonderful things from the Lord, we have to be in agreement with him. <clears throat> and to get the spiritual gifts, we have to be in agreement and be one with him. The list you just read is just the beginning. For instance, you might have gifts of encouragement, hospitality, and administration. Whatever your giftedness Whatever your giftedness, life becomes richer as you invest, as we put into others, by coming alongside and serving them. If God has given you these things, they are to be served to others. Yes, when you are a prophet, I've mentioned when you are P-R-O-P-H-E-T, 
you will profit p-r-o-f-i-t how do you profit as what do you mean you will profit in the spiritual world you will profit financially you will profit as the way according to god's riches and glory you will profit being a prophet life becomes more exciting when you start to see how your giftedness and calling fit perfectly within the lord's strategy for reaching the lost telling the gospel the gospel is the good news Jesus' birth and resurrection. That's the definition for those that want to know what the gospel is. For a long time, I didn't know what it meant. And sharing his love. As I've mentioned, love is an action, but it's a decision. It's not something that comes naturally. Our emotions come naturally. God heal us because our emotions will distract us and put fear in us to not bring according to not bring into effect the things that God has called us to, which is loving the unlovable or loving people that have done you dirty or turning your cheek when somebody says something ugly to you. Not turning your cheek in the sense of slapping the Holy Spirit into them, but turning your cheek to God, knowing that the Lord is going to handle that situation or that person. Bring in Holy Spirit. Uh, when you see, when you use your gifts, you are playing your role in God's plan to impact the world around us. Impact. What is impact? It's something that is felt by others. Are they going to feel the weight of your bitterness? Or are they going to feel the weight of your joy and know where your joy comes from? The Holy Spirit. If you step up and run your race, this word has been in my life, the race for the past, like, Maybe six weeks. I've just been seeing that and movies about it. Exercising your gifts. Who could hear about Jesus who otherwise might not? Who might receive freedom from being hungry, enslaved, or impoverished? Or hopeless? And who could be transformed by God's healing touch and redemptive power? You've got resurre resurrection residue on you, kings and queens. Use it. Use that residue. <laughs> As he's given us resurrection life, resurrection power, we've got that residue. Let's be resurrection life for others. Let's get people that are hungry, fed. Let's get people that are enslaved, freed, and impoverished. Let's help them. The people that are hopeless, let's give them hope. Let's encourage them. When you have identified and readied your gifts, ask God to guide you and use you wherever he needs you. He will empower you. You can read more on this on 1 Corinthians 12 and 11. Today, um, so... And today's quote is yesterday's the past, tomorrow's the future, but today is a gift. It is a gift for those that seek the Lord and reveal how much of a gift it is. When you wake up and you've got an attitude of gratitude, I would tell you that your attitude's going to affect your altitude. What do you mean? As It means that where your attitude is, if you're grateful, you will go higher. If you're miserable and you're constantly making excuses for the reason why you're bitter, you're ugly, and your heart is hardened, you will realize soon enough that no one wants to be around you. No one likes to be around people that are negative. Um, and this is the one thing that the Lord revealed to me today. So he told me to study the Declaration of Independence, which I did. <sighs> Our gifts are used to, to free others. Now, today is July 4th. We celebrate the Declaration of Independence, where we live a life of freedom in the pursuit of happiness with purpose. And I was reading the Declaration of Independence and it literally stated on there, it had a long name, they shortened name, thank you Jesus. But it said that by the creator, they were being obedient in their callings and to bring this to pass. And because they brought the Declaration of Freedom, they prophesied it first. The Declaration was meaning you are declaring in your life that you want the Holy Spirit. Hi Queen, thank you for your time. Love you, oh thank you. Um, You are declaring they were declaring that we were going to be freed and we were going to live a life of purpose and freedom and liberty for all. And we were going to, per, to pursue a life of happiness to, and the pursuit of happiness. So meaning you are, God created us to live freely. He's going to give us free will to do as we please, to live as we please. But it's always important that you always have somebody watching you. Every one of us has somebody watching you wanting what you have. You may think you're down in the dumps and you don't have much, but somebody is looking at you to because they see you living a life of freedom. They see you living a life of pursuit of happiness. They see you in, you know, you're, you're getting the things that you always desired. But everyone has made certain sacrifices in their life for things that they want. So it's important that when you look at people, you don't look at them with envy. Look at them with admirate, ad, admit admiration to know what is it that they sacrifice if you want something they have what is it that they sacrifice that you weren't willing to do that's what the lord has shown me in uh lately in this season is that you create the life that you want and god will let you live on the level of life that you choose to if you choose to look at other people and be envious and bitter and talk hateful things because you're jealous of what they have look at the sacrifices they did god has put them in your life to inspire you and activate you that what they have you too can have 
If you're willing to put the work in it, if you're maybe they're tithing and you don't even know that. Why is it that they never run out of money? Well, when you tithe your money, the Lord watches out for your money. Whatever it is that you tithe in, whatever that you give of your time, you serve his people, you serve his church, you, you serve where he's called you to serve. He will give you, he will make your time be with great in, intention and purpose. That's why he's telling us, if you serve, serve. So as I was learning with the Declaration of Independence, June 28th, they declared it, they, they prophesied it. In Habakkuk 2.2, 2, it says to write your vision plain, write it down so it can come to pass and look at it every day. So therefore you can see, this is why I'm going to create this. You have a vision board. It's going to help you make decisions to get there. Give it to the Lord. The Lord will give you all the desires of your heart. Seek him and his kingdom and do the things that he's asking you to do. And these things will be magnetically attracted to you. Not magnetically, but spiritually attracted to you. They will hunt you down. And on July 4th is when it came into effect. July 4th, 1776. I will tell you that this morning when God was telling me to study the Declaration of Independence, um, I was really busy because I had my, my princess. Um, but God told me, to prioritize and studying it. And I studied it and I received a letter today that it was stamped June 28th. And it's something that I've been praying about. And it's something that I'm like, Lord, whether you do it or not, I will glorify you. I will honor you. I will be in thankfulness for you. And that's where he wants us to be. He doesn't want us to do things to receive. He wants us to do things because we love him and we trust him and we honor him. And that you will have a fruitful life. When, he, when you serve those around you, and, and you're good to those who may not be good to you. It feels good to be good when you're activated with the Holy Spirit, when you're one with him. These are all, all these obstacles. They're only opportunities to advance you. But you got to trust in him to let go of those finances when he tells you to bless someone. Let that money go. He's telling you to bless someone with it because who knows? They need it. And maybe you're an act of God for that person. So the one thing that I would tell you is that the letter that I had been praying for, I received, I um, it was dated the 28th and today's July 4th. I got a letter stating that on June 28th, something that I've been praying for was a breakthrough. It doesn't give me a yes or no that I was looking to hear, but in the spirit, God told me if I made y'all have freedom, liberty and justice for all and to live because the creator, if, if Thomas Jefferson created this, this declaration and wrote it down, he didn't even know if it was going to happen. He wrote it down. He was being obedient to the creator in giving us freedom, giving us a life to live with purpose and to pursue happiness. If it's in that declaration, he was prophesying it. And July 4th, it came to pass. It went into effect. Praise Jesus for all the people that have fought for our freedom. And even the people today that are fighting to free people that are enslaved in the spirit, that they're in bondage. Those are first responders as well. I always tell my husband, he's a first responder. He's a firefighter, paramedic. He was Marine. You know, he, he's, he's got the heart of serving. And when he married me, God, he has the heart of serving. He's an amazing, exceptional man of God and husband and father to my kids. And he's just an amazing gentleman that I'm truly thankful to have. But if God put it in him and countless others that are serving this country and fighting for our freedom, what what has he put in you? What gift has he put in you? This is important to ask yourself. What gift has, has he chosen you to serve in, to empower us through his power, to free others? Maybe you're not out fighting on the front lines or maybe you didn't give your service to be a... a, a someone to be in the in the service like fighting for our country but maybe you're fighting spiritually on your knees maybe you're doing everything you're prophesying you're speaking you're giving generously you're encouraging others and you're cheerfully doing it diligently leading others to the kingdom of god well thank you for your service and god bless each and every one of you that has tuned in today and continue to share and pray my notes are and that's one thing that I want to tell you is that today as I went to the gym, the, the instructor said, your mind is going to tell you how to do something else today, especially because we're in the last 10 minutes. Your mind is going to tell you to do something else. She's like, but do what you need to do. Burn them calories. Um, and it's the same thing. Your mind is going to tell you things you don't want to hear. That's why the Holy Spirit says, activate with me. Read my word. Study my word. My word will empower you. My word will activate you. My word will prophesy in your life. My, my word will teach you. My word will encourage you. My word will give you generously. My word will show you mercy 
and cheerfully it will activate you so i pray that this is not the only time that you have with the holy spirit with me i pray that um and if it is borrow some of my excitement to get activated today and to read your word today's prayer is lord god help me help you help us discover and use the good gifts you've given me it is our joy it is my joy it is your joy to live in your plans and power in jesus mighty name and the quotes that i wrote was yesterday's the past tomorrow yesterday's the past tomorrow's the future but today is a gift mm. and the other one this is amazing this one i love absolutely it's one of my favorites quote your talent is god's gift to you what you do with it is your gift back to god i have mentioned that quote sometime this month but i want you to know that your talents your skills your anointing your encouragement your education your grace your mercy your kindness your gentleness your patience your self-control all of those are gifts what you do with those gifts is your gift back to god and that was leo buscaria i pray that these bless you today i i know i have my granddaughter um she behaved very well um, I just want y'all each to know that you are blessed. You are king or queen. Don't let anyone or anything make you act lower than the king or the queen that God has called you to act in, to serve in, to educate in. Um, anything that makes you walk out of the will of God, you walk out of your kingdom. Your kingdom are your communities, your families, your career, your businesses, your enemies, your neighborhood. All of these things are your kingdom. You are called to reign responsibly, king and queen. You have gifts. Steward them well. I always say reign responsibly because reigning means that you are taking authority over your kingdom to protect them, pursue them, provide for them, peace with them, having peace with them. All of these things are given to you by the Holy Spirit because they're gifts. His presence is a present. Let's be a present to others while we are in their presence, especially today and every day. Today, as you gather with your families, I pray that you think about that, you know, Thomas Jefferson did something that the Lord called him to. It was a gift. He had an urgency to bring to pass the Declaration of Independence. And now I understand Jan Hancock, when he signed it, you know, all these men that were kings, that were leading the nation and creating a nation under God. They did it for God. So God bless you. Thank you for your time, Investor King Queen. I pray that it's blessed you. And happy 4th of July. Happy day of freedom from my family to yours. Spiritually, mentally, physically. And spiritually in Jesus' mighty name. May God bless you and shine his face upon you and your family today. May you be in peace and love. And remember that everything that you have, God has blessed you with it. And if you're not going to have that attitude of gratitude, you're going to live a sorry life. So God bless you. And I'm praying for each and every one of you that you have that attitude of gratitude because your attitude affects your altitude. King or queen, reign responsibly. This too shall pass. God is at work. Are you at work with the gifts that he's blessed you? God bless you. I'll see y'all tomorrow. God bless. Bye. Say bye, Petey Gale. Say bye. Say bye. Say bye. This is another one of my grandchild, grandchildren. Thank you for your time. Oh, one more thing. If you don't have a relationship with the Holy Spirit, repeat after me. Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. Come into my heart. I make you my Lord and my Savior. Thank you for your works in my life. Thank you for freeing me to free the others in Jesus' name. If you pray that simple prayer, put God first. If you need a Holy Bible or daily devotional, please reach out to me. I will get you on God's feet. Any prayer requests, inbox me or comment below. Thank you for your time invested today. I pray that it's advanced you and I pray that it's blessed you tremendously. God bless you. Share with someone that the Lord has put on your heart right now in Jesus' name. Refresh others and you too shall be refreshed. God bless. Bye.